All right, moment of truth. Wow. This looks... <laughs> Zero dollars spent on this. Wow. So you want to be a pro YouTuber, and you got a computer, but you don't have a good camera or a good microphone. Well, good news. You probably actually do have those things, and you might even be able to bring some professional lighting into the mix. But we'll get into that later. As for the camera and mic situation, well, it might just be in your pocket. You might even have a couple more laying around. That's right. I am talking about the cell phone. Now, there are some pretty cool things that you can do with a cell phone to turn yourself into a pro YouTuber without spending a dime. Any more dimes. You probably spent some dimes on the cell phone, but you already have it, so you're not spending any more dimes. Okay, first thing we do is we head to obsproject.com. OBS is a popular recording and streaming software that most creators use. Now, in this video, I'm gonna have a few links, but I'll leave them all in the description so you can always reference back to those. So once you get to the OBS website, you click on whatever operating system you use, and I've got Windows, so I'm gonna click on that, and then it will download. It's done. So I'll just go ahead and click on that, and I will install this. Now, once you're done installing OBS, the next thing you're gonna do is go to the second link in the description. I believe it's dev47apps.com slash OBS. Now, this is a plugin for OBS. It's called DroidCam, but no worries, it does work on iPhone and Mac too, so yeah, works for everybody. What we're gonna do is scroll down, and we're gonna scroll past the Get to App, we'll do that in a second. We're just gonna go to download the OBS plugin, pick your operating system, just like you did for OBS, and once that's done downloading, you can open OBS, and when you're adding a source, like if you're adding a camera, you'll hit the plus button and you'll be able to see DroidCam OBS. That's how you know that you installed it correctly. Let's move over to the phones. Let me just move the camera out of the way so it doesn't look like I have a hat on. Not that there's anything wrong with hats. I'm just not a hat guy. I'm more of a banana guy. We have two phones. To avoid any confusion, I'm doing both an iPhone and a Droid. This is an iPhone X and this is a Droid Galaxy S8, as you can see, it's pretty old. I'm not using it anymore. So the way that I prepare it is I turn it on airplane mode. I, I went to all the settings and I turned off the notifications for every app. And as long as you got the Wi-Fi, you're good to go. The one we want is Droid Cam OBS. That's, that's the winner right there. The one that looks like a little webcam. So let's go ahead and install it. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the iPhone. And that's the one. Let's go ahead and get it. Click next. Got it. Droid Cam would like to access the camera. Yes. Microphone. Yes. Droid Cam would like to track your activity. No to that. Droid Cam would like to find and connect devices on your network. Okay, yes. That's what we need. Right here, I'm I'm not gonna show it to you because it's my IP address. That's the information that you're gonna put into OBS and that's how it's gonna connect through your Wi-Fi. You go to your sources, you click add source, you click on Droid Cam OBS. We're gonna call this uh, iPhone. You can call it whatever you want doesn't matter, just whatever makes sense to you. And then you enter your Wi-Fi IP, which is the thing that I blurred out on the phone. Once entered, you just hit activate, and then it should, yay! Yep, see, works just fine. Okay, so the default resolution is 640 by 480, and that's like the free version. You can get as many cell phones you want on there, it doesn't matter. But if you want an HD resolution like 1920 by 1080, then uh, there's like a $10 one-time purchase. It's not a subscription thing or whatever. I ended up purchasing it not only because I wanted the high quality for recording, but it gives you a remote control. And I just want to show you how that works real quick. So there are a lot of tutorials online on how to install the remote and set it up in OBS, so I won't go too deep into that. But I do want to show you what it offers. It shows your battery life, which is cool. It's a dock, so you can kind of move it around in OBS and lock it into place. So the cameras, uh, you're looking at my uh, one magnification camera, but if I click here, it goes to my ultra wide, which is like the 0.6 magnification. You can turn on the, uh, the light, you can change the white balance, you can change the focus, you can change the exposure. If you like where the exposure is and you don't want it to adjust, you can just hit lock. Of course, you can zoom in and then you can hit stop here and it'll stop. And then you can actually just go ahead and hit start again and you can like control the phone and save the battery life directly from the remote. Anyway, it's cool. I like it. I highly recommend it, but that's paying for something and it's not necessary. It comes in handy when you're using multiple phones, but you don't have to. Now. 
Speaking of multiple phones, I just want to show you how I set mine up. Over here on the scenes, I would just click add scene, and then I would click here and add a source, and I would add a new Droid uh, Cam OBS and do that whole process. The reason I bring this up is because switching between the cameras can be awesome. It can be super useful. I can just hit buttons and, and switch and do whatever I want and yeah. Now I use a stream deck to do that like so, but it's not necessary. Actually, all you really need is a keyboard and I really hope you have one if you have a computer. So let me show you how to make your own camera switcher. To make this easier, I'm just going to go ahead and rename some of these. Okay, so Ultra is camera 2. This one, let's just go ahead and name it camera 3, camera 4. This S8 here. <laughs> Good lord. There's so many phones. That is going to be camera 5. It's just going to face the ceiling. So with OBS open, go to settings. And then you're going to go down here to hotkeys. Now scroll down until you find the newly named scenes. So there's camera 2. So go ahead and click here. Now, I like to use my numpad as like the camera numbers. I just, I find that that's the easiest way to go about this. So camera two will be the number two. Camera three, switch to scene, we'll hit number three. And then we'll go to camera four, switch to scene, four. Camera five, and so on, and you get it. And you could have like nine cameras in that little area. And if you have more than nine cameras, you might wanna consider sacrificing some other keys. All right, so here's the screen. And then we're gonna hit number two, number three, number four, number five, and so on. You get the idea. Now, I've got two more things about the cameras, two more super awesome, helpful, free tools. And as always, the links are gonna be in the description. So, say you wanna record all of these cameras, not just what OBS is seeing, but you wanna have the footage from every angle, that way you can take it into your editing program and pick the angles you want for which parts. The tool you're looking for is called Source Record. The last thing, about the cameras is if you're a live streamer and you want the cameras to switch as if they're being run by cameramen, then the tool you're looking for is called Advanced Scene Switcher. Now I've used this tool before, I just haven't really needed it a whole lot lately. I do have a tutorial website that's like super easy to understand how to use it. There's a video on that website, you don't have to watch it. The guy basically spells it out right under the video. There's no fluff, it's, it's a really nice tutorial. So uh, yeah, I'll include that link with the uh, install link and yeah, enjoy, hope it works out for you. All right, moving on to microphones. Now, if you have a microphone, I suggest using it. But if you don't, the Droid Cam app does have access to your camera's microphone if you allow it. So you can enable it and you can disable it and it works. It has uh, noise cancellation, echo suppression. It, it sounds pretty good. Now, if you have another phone that you don't plan to use for a camera, then you could probably do what I saw Hank from Vlogbrothers do the other day. When I read human curated stuff, I like it. I'm like, people are better at this than computers. Hank was using his cell phone as his microphone. And if I weren't watching the video, I wouldn't have noticed. I guess it kind of just goes to show that microphone quality has really improved over the years. And I guess like nobody cares. As long as it sounds clear, that's all that matters. So, we've covered the cameras, we've covered the mics, now let's uncover the lights. <laughs> Lighting is pretty important when it comes to looking professional, and it can get pretty expensive, but it doesn't have to. So proper lighting without spending a whole lot of money is totally achievable with things that you can just find around your house. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to focus on two things. You want soft light, and you want correct positioning. These up here are soft boxes. So what we wanna do is we wanna build one of those. Let's build something. So I got some supplies that people would find around their house. I got some tape. I got some scissors. I got some duct tape, which will come in handy, I'm sure. I got some baking paper. Here is um, just some like cardstock. I plan on just putting it inside the box, which by the way, I have a cardboard box. I plan on just putting it on the inside. So you could use like any kind of paper. I just need it to be white on the inside. So, and then this is like the only thing that people might not have, but if you have a regular table lamp or like one of these lamps back here, you know, whatever works, it's gotta be a lamp. But this is hilarious. I wanted to show you this. It's my clip on lamp and this, it's a little lampshade that I made. I made this little lampshade out of popsicle sticks and this wire stuff. 
And then I just taped it to the, the light bulb, which is fine because it's an LED bulb. It didn't make it hot. That's probably something to consider for this. You are going to be putting a light bulb inside of a box that has paper in it. So I would consider using LED. The plan is, oh, I almost forgot the best part. The broom. I mean, how else are we going to have a, a light, you know, go over us? So uh, I figure many families have a broom and maybe you could go steal yours. So the broom has to be able to stand up somehow. I will figure that out. Yeah. This box right here has these little handles in it. So my idea is to send the broom through the handles like this, and that's how we get the soft box. Right now, the box is too big and I'm sick of it. So let's get to crafting. Soft boxes usually go in a wedge shape like this. That's what we'll do. All right, one side we're gonna cut off. So the front, I'm cutting these off. <laughs> At this moment, I realized how dangerous this could be and I reconsidered how I would go about it. You can turn any regular box into a soft box if you are so inclined. Um, there. I'm just gonna take out the light bulb for now. I just wanna need that breaking. Just to keep the uh, materials as accessible as possible, we're gonna do something a little, a little wacky. That thing is so stupid. Okay, look. But we should be able to lock this thing into place. That in there, that in there. Okay. Oh wow, it's really on there. Cool, okay. So we are secure. As you can see, soft boxes have a very specific shape to them. So if we imagine the light bulbs in here, we could get that shape by putting two of these right here, two of these right here. Now, what we gotta do is put the white paper on the inside so the light uh, reflects a lot. So let's get to that. So, there we have it. <laughs> There's my stupid soft box. Bask in its glory. It's a little unstable, but it'll be okay. So, I, I did this in about 45 minutes. You got plenty of time to make it a much better project, but I'm hoping after this, you kind of understand how the light works. I would love to see your versions. If, if you would, send us some pictures. Tweet at us. Say, hey, look, this is, this was mine. This is my ridiculous contraption. <laughs> Reynolds Kitchen's parchment paper smart grid measuring easy technology. Who knew that tech would evolve to have grids on paper? Crazy. So, as I stand here questioning my life choices, I find myself curious, almost fearfully curious, on what this softbox is gonna look like. I'm gonna set up my cameras, I'm gonna turn off all my lights, I'm gonna kick this baby on, and we're gonna see just how pro a YouTuber setup can look without spending any extra money. All right, moment of truth. Hey, this isn't too bad, actually. Um, it's a bit more moody than I'd like. I, I knew that it would be because it's like, it's one light, you know? Uh, if I had more time, I would make two of them and I'd place them on each side at like a 45 degree angle. That way it would fill out just a little bit more uh, make the shadows less prominent. I left the backlights on uh, just a regular color and brightness uh, Because like you could just use a lamp back there, you know a dim lamp or something. It doesn't have to be anything special It just adds depth. That's that's the point, you know, you put a little light back there So it's like not like you're sitting in a void, you know that that really provides that whole professional 
look. So I went into the archives of vidIQ and I found this video from 2022 that really dives into more details to help a new YouTuber become a pro YouTuber. And it's actually the video that inspired me to do this one. I knew that I wanted to talk about the tips in this video that I did. I just didn't know when I would do it. And then I watched this video and yeah, I got inspired. So I think you'll enjoy it. I'm gonna use this light for so many things. 